are now listening to The War Report Podcast Network. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the College Loop pregame show as we're getting ready for the Auburn Tigers as they take on the Vanderbilt Commodores tomorrow as it's being recorded no at 3 o'clock p.m. I'm here during the day by the sports editor of the Vanderbilt Hustler, Mr. Andrew. Is it Wolf? Andrew Wolf. Hey, Dylan. Thank, thank you so much for, for having me on the show today. I'm a senior at Vanderbilt studying history and business. And boy, has it been a great experience thus far. Really enjoying it here. So, um, and the Hustler has given me such great opportunities from having an unprecedented opportunity to talk to SEC coaches and, and write about sports. And it's what I love to do. So, so let's get right, right to it. Yeah, and so as it stands right now, Auburn is a 12-and-a-half point favorite. And is there like a feeling going around uh, in the Vanderbilt students about this game coming up? Because I know there's like a lot of people that I know of that are traveling to Nashville and have been very excited about going just to hang out in Nashville and just play Vanderbilt as a whole. Dylan, Dylan, I lost you there. Can you just repeat that question, please? Oh, sorry, yeah. Uh, what's What's been like the, the student-like – opinion on this game like what, what have you been hearing a lot about this game from like classmates yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah totally. so, first bank stadium that's venerable's home stadium and this is the last game of the year this is your opportunity to show there's a lot of progress and a lot of opportunity and promise for the 2024 season commoners are two and seven lost seven straight this is their last home game it's also alumni weekend homecoming so you have a lot of old people coming back so there's also a little chip on your shoulder. And with all due respect to Auburn, this is Vanderbilt's most best chance of being competitive as they play South Carolina and Tennessee as their next few games. And playing in South Carolina and in Tennessee aren't, aren't favorable places. And I think playing against Auburn is an opportunity for you to show, you know what, 2022 to 23 wasn't as big of a decline as you might think. Yeah, and uh, Vanderbilt, of course, coming in here without A.J. Swan. Uh, is what we believe, uh, but Ken Seals and Walter Taylor coming in. Is, is what is the uh, what's your confidence level with those two? Like kind of splitting reps at quarterback. Yes. So for everyone that isn't aware, AJ Swan comes in as a starter. Plays very very solid against Hawaii first game. Very solid against Alabama and M. Has a lot of turnovers against Wake Forest, and then UNLV has an elbow contusion in the second quarter. Ends up playing it through. Plays comes back in the game. Plays through. Then Kentucky game re-injures it and re-aggravates it, aggravates it. He hasn't seen the field since. Ken Seals is a senior. He was a starter his freshman season and half of the sophomore season for Vanderbilt. And he started the past few games. Last game, the Combers couldn't have had a worse start. Come off of a bye week, Georgia game wasn't as embarrassing as many people would have expected. And Ken Seals had a really bad interception and just had really bad incompletions. So Clark Lee and co said, let's bring someone else. Let's bring Walter Taylor, sophomore, a lot of athleticism, four-star out of high school. And those are the two you'll, you'll see both of them getting reps. Kind of like what you all do with the Auburn Tigers, having two quarterbacks. I know, I know we'll, we'll talk about it more. I know you have one quarterback that's more likely to get more reps. I would say the same for, for the Vanderbilt with Ken Seals. But it's just something to, to, to put the defense on their toes, I think. With Ken Seals, it's a very solid pocket passer, plays within himself. But he does. You know what you're going to get out of him. You're not going to get a four touchdown performance, and he's not going to throw many thirty plus yard passes. Yeah, that does sound very similar to what Auburn is currently going through with with Ken C or not Ken, uh, Peyton Thorne and Robbie Ashford. The 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 more athletic dual threat is kind of the one that you're not going to see as much, only for certain packages. And I'll give you freeze credit. Uh, he finally seemed like he is going to stick with Peyton Thorne throughout the entire game. Uh, so what we've seen, uh, at least last week. Uh, sticking to Peyton Thorne and going into this game. I mean, Vanderbilt doesn't have the best defense in the world, so I think it does benefit Auburn in that way. Uh, and, and but what are your thoughts? Sorry to interject. Some of Vanderbilt's players on the second day won't be playing. You look at BJ Anderson, Trudel Berry, um, CJ Taylor, those guys will, will all be out. And those are key, key inactives as Auburn hopes to beat Vanderbilt on the top. Yeah, and just going into the defense, I believe, as my Chihuahua decides to have a asthma attack right under me. So that's awesome. Uh, so what are your thoughts going into this game? Auburn finally found a rhythm in the run game over the past couple of weeks with Jarquez Hunter. So what are your overall thoughts on this Vanderbilt defense going against an Auburn running back room that 
has some star power in it. Yeah, I mean, Manorville defense against Ole Miss, Jenkins just tore us apart. I think what happens is against a lot of these high-flying offenses in the SEC, you try so hard to not let them beat you up top that you're just going to give those seven, eight-yard runs. Vanderbilt had 28 missed tackles against Ole Miss. Just put that into context, 28. And when I look, when when me and the other writers look back at those tackles, I think it was one of our writers, Aiden, he was generous. Some of those tackles, it could have even been considered like 35 missed tackles. So you got to just f- focus on the fundamentals, see what you can do, put pressure on the quarterback, give Auburn situations where it's second and 13, third and 15, where you have to pass the ball. When it's first and five, or sorry, second and five, second and four, that's where you're going to start to see Auburn really uh, wearing down the venerable rush defense. Yeah, and Auburn has shown this past year they are not very good when you put them in those third and long situations. Sometimes third and short situations are – or a hindrance to this Auburn offense. And, and with all due respect, most teams aren't good. But if you have, like, if you have a Leary or if you have Cook and if you have Jaden Daniels, it's a different situation. I think we can agree both of our quarterbacks are not are not the Tom Brady's of the SEC, to be to be modest, right? That That's a nice way to put it. Yeah, that's, I thought that's a very generous way to say that because uh, we can all agree. We're just two schools not in the best situation right now. Uh, when it comes to probably the most important position to have uh, on your team. And to see where and, you guys went to with, with Bo to this, uh, you know, I feel. Oh, yeah, but Bo, I miss him. I, I think he did the best thing for his career, but it, it's going to be nice to see how Hugh Freeze can can generate better uh, field generals in the in the future, like uh, with Walker White coming in. Of I, think, I, I think NIL will be huge and, and really good for that, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. And even if it just takes going to back into the portal and grabbing another guy, that that would be awesome as well. And I will say for just for Auburn's defense uh, in this game, Auburn has had a couple of streaks where their best corner, DJ James, has had some very, very poor uh, judgments on, in his coverage. And I feel like this could be a trip-up spot for this Auburn secondary because if Will Shepard – is Will Shepard supposed to play? I've heard, I've heard uh, questionable he's, all week. He's, 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 still, he's still day-to-day, but I think he'll, he'll stick it out. Yeah, but Will Shepard and of course Jade McGowan, who I, I've said on on record has probably been one of the fastest dudes in the SEC thus far this year. And if DJ James can't keep up with can't, can't keep up with uh, Jade McGowan and just how much of a great wide receiver uh, Will Shepard is, I mean this this game could end up being uh, a barn burner as such. Yeah, I mean when when you think about those two players, you just think about how much improvement Barton Simmons. So Vanderbilt has a very unique system with the way they organize their team. They have a general manager, Barton Simmons. It's kind of like an NFL Bill Belichick type thing. I wouldn't say Bill Belichick, but <laughs> you understand. An NFL yeah. way to organize your team. The receiver room has been the biggest improvement from the Derek Mason era to Clark, era, Clark Lee. You have Will Shepard, who I think is an NFL draftable player. He's a red zone threat, really big body receiver. I always relate him to like a Laquan Treadwell when he was in college. Might not be that fast um, off the breaks, but just gives you such such good one on one ability. Jaden McGowan, I, I like to I like to relate him to like a Debo Debo Samuel when he was at South Carolina. Swiss Army knife. You can put him in the backfield. You can put him in jet sweep. But you can also put him in the slot. The thing with the thing with Jaden is he's so fast and so little, and you think how how's a guy like that playing a football game, but. Boy, when he has the ball in the hands, a lot of fun stuff can happen. But the issue is, can Vanderbilt's quarterbacks put the ball in his hands? Then you think about London Humphreys, freshman receiver. He beat Jaden Ramsey, I think it was 200-meter dashes record for the Nashville high school area. So he's also a really fast player, true freshman. He won freshman of the week. I think it was after the Wake Forest game. So there's a lot of good talent. There's a lot of good pieces, but it's about putting these puzzles together. I also think about... Um, Quincy Skinner, Gamarian, and Carter. A lot of these good receivers, they're just not getting enough reps because Vanderbilt's not starting the games off uh, um, quick enough. Yeah, and say so that uh, we talked about on another podcast, The War Report, talking about this Vanderbilt offense, and I believe it's Ike brought up the fact that that Vanderbilt passed the ball a lot more uh, in games because they seem to fall behind, and the run game doesn't get utilized as much. Should Auburn be a little worried about a potential 
rushing attack from this Vanderbilt offense, or you think Ken Seals is just going to try to <clears throat> get the ball to like Jade McGowan and Wilshire? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt didn't have a game over a hundred yards on the ground since the Alabama A and M game until Ole Miss, oh, I, and that was a game. And, and that was a game that a lot of those runs, a lot of those rushing yards happened because of Walter Taylor, and it was garbage time. I think Vanderbilt's freshman, true freshman running back, Cedric Alexander, again, a guy in the ball in the hands, gets a lot of good holes, was really good in high school. I, I see a lot of possibilities there. But it's about that offensive line solid, playing good, solidified, complementary football and, and giving holes for this offense. I think when you have Ken Seals in the game, you're kind of limited because you can't run. But with Walter Taylor, you have a dual threat option and then when that happens you have more opportunities to create a play action pass and, and get more good runs in as well and, and to you uh, just looking at uh auburn does seem to have the mo most talent i i think it could safe to say that both teams probably have underperformed a little bit this year i, I thought vanderbilt was going to be a an under the radar team because of how they played last no, I year did too. To give everyone context, most of these listeners are Auburn fans, so let me just tell you all because we haven't met in seven years. Vanderbilt, <laughs> Derek Mason was the coach until 2020 season. That was the famous season when Sarah Fuller went in. Vanderbilt was 0-9. It was only SEC play. 2021, Vanderbilt brings in former Commodore Clark Lee, who was the defensive coordinator at Notre Dame. He only wins two games. Those two games were against UConn and Colorado State. And it just seemed like the same old Vanderbilt. Second year, such an improvement. Five wins. You win in Kentucky against Will Levis, who, who's now a starting quarterback in the NFL. They were ranked. And then the week later, you beat the Florida Gators in Nashville. So there was so much momentum, so much build. And the Commodores were destined to make the bowl, a bowl game for the first time since 2018 in the Texas Bowl when they lost to Baylor. But what, what happened? A lot of a lot of really bad turnovers, not taking care of the ball. It sounds simple. It sounds like a broken record, but that's what went wrong for the Commodores, right? You lose that UNLV game, should have won that one. Wake Forest could have been more competitive. And the SEC games, your best game was against Georgia. You're not going to beat Georgia. So it's just about those building blocks. I think the Commodores can do it. I think the locker room is still believing. And, and it has been underwhelming, absolutely. Only only two wins on the on this resume. I was I believe there's there's looking at the guys who are hired in that year. Clark Lee to me definitely seems like he is going to be that guy for Vanderbilt. I definitely like what Clark Lee's building down there. He's just an all around just upstanding coach. I think just kind of just hurt by the fact that Vanderbilt doesn't bring in the talent that's about the SEC team. Dylan, absolutely. I mean, I talked to Paul Feinbaum about it in Auburn on, on his TV show. It was great to be a guest. And I was, I was saying that Clark Lee, he always talks about Vanderbilt being one of one. And his pitch is that it offers an unprecedented uh, combination of athletics, city, and great academics. And that's something that no other SEC school can offer. But the issue is the transfers, Clark Lee's transfers haven't fully rung in yet. They're getting there. And I think there is there is a talent imbalance with Vanderbilt. I think with NIL, there I think the other teams definitely have more money. And I I think there is a, there is an aspect of the Commodores just are aren't at a at a level playing field. I think to get to that level playing full field is winning those big games like Florida and, and Kentucky last year. And hopefully those transfers and, and recruits that the Vanderbilt got last year. They'll, they'll they'll play better at the end of this season and next season. Yeah, and I guess see with that, I'm going to ask you this question: What is your score prediction for Auburn at Vanderbilt? So, what did the line say? Was it 13? I think it was 12 and a half. So basically, yeah, 13. 12 and a half. And what was the over under 44? That I don't know. That's one of the one of the betting odds I typically try to stray stray away from. That way I don't uh, get a little okay. too. I say the Commodores back. are going to win. 24-21. Commodores uh, win twenty. This is my last game as a Vanderbilt. This is my last ever game as a college student going to a game. And what better way for the Commodores to end their season? As me as a senior watching in the press box, their final win. Obviously, you always have to hope and optimism. Keys to victory to do that. Winning the turnover battle. Ken Seals playing within himself. 
Because if the commoner and also starting off strong, the commoners don't they'll have a very similar start to all Miss because Auburn will, will, will bite you right back. And, and I know you guys had a really, really, really solid performance last week. And I, I acknowledge that, but maybe you guys are a little hungover, overlooking Vanderbilt. That, that's what happened against Kentucky and Florida last season. And I, I see a potential win. I see a 24 21 win. I respect it. What's your I can't say I I can't say I agree with it, but <laughs> so uh I don't want to copy Tar. Uh, Tar uh, picked 34 17 Auburn. I definitely think this is like, gonna be a turning point for the Auburn offense going down the field because you really need to beat Vanderbilt in order to beat Arkansas and Alabama and hopefully just stay competitive with Alabama at the end of the year. I think I'm gonna rock with an Auburn win and I'm gonna go thirty to thirteen. I, I just uh Give, giving Auburn a chance to finally hit that uh, threshold that they have haven't hit in SEC play yet, uh, just getting 30 points in a game, and another opportunity for Peyton Thorne to gain some confidence uh, against a defense that has has struggled this season in Vanderbilt. But I, I definitely respect you wanting to wanting to finish out your Vanderbilt football car- like career with uh, with a win. I can't say that my my last Auburn home game that I saw as a student was the uh, four overtime loss to Alabama. Uh, with TJ Finley at quarterback, oh. so yeah, that was uh, wow. that was a rough one to watch. Luckily, I wasn't on sure. the field. I, heard, uh, I, I, I missed the game. I had to watch it on TV, but yeah, that game was rough all around. All right, well, I know you have to get going soon, so I'm gonna let you go ahead. We'll skip the pre, we'll skip the uh, weekly pickums for this week, and just go let everybody know where they can love you, find you, support you, and read your work. Yeah, absolutely. On X, you can follow me on Andrew underscore Wilf. That's just my name, just Andrew underscore Wilf. Um, we talk about we, we we write content all the time. Madam Hustler, our student newspaper, we're writing twelve to thirteen articles per week, two per day, talking everything Madam football. I get to talk to Clark Lee every Tuesday, and it's the we just won best sports online newspaper in the country, and that's our best job because we're not a print. And that's the second consecutive year, and and it's just a testament to the the hard work of all of all our staff writers. And I'm so grateful to be in this position. And every day, I, I don't take it for, for granted. I'm so thankful to be here. Thank you so yeah. much, Dylan, and have a great weekend. And no problem. You're free to join at any time. Yeah, baseball season is coming up. You text soon. me too. And once basketball rolls around, I'll, I'll oh, yeah, I basketball for down, sure. I might go down to the Auburn game, so maybe we can get a bite. Oh, no problem. I'll, I'll try to get up there as soon as I can. I've always wanted to go to Nashville, so I've somehow avoided in all 23 years of my life. But, again, thanks, friend of the program. Uh, and believe me, Vanderbilt's one of my favorite teams to root for. Uh, I love the lovable lovable loser aspect. But, yeah, of course, you can follow me on Twitter next as well, at you boy the tank, at Y-A-B-O-Y the tank. Also have me on Instagram at Dylan Lark at D-Y-L-E-N-L-A-R-C-K. Also have us. Right here on the College Loop, which you like, comment, subscribe. Leave your predictions for the Auburn Vanderbilt game. If you get the closest one, you get a nice little shout out on the next or the Tuesday show. Sunday show is a little bit of a, a stream, so it's going to be a little harder to do that. But of course, you also have us on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, X, and all of that great social media platforms that we are on, all at the College Loop. Reminder that we're getting so close to 700 subs, and we are not feeding Colin until we get to 700 subs. So make sure to do that, of course. And with all of that being said, Andrew, thank you again, man. This has been the College Loop podcast, or sorry, College Loop pregame show.